Good morning, everyone, and um, we are welcoming you as the School of Interdisciplinary Research and Graduate Studies. In the College of Graduate Studies, we are welcoming you to the second working session, which you will be introduced to Atlas TI. And my name is Tony Majila, and I am the research training officer in the School of Interdisciplinary Research and Graduate Studies in the College of Graduate Studies. So we started this working sessions and um, the first one was on the introduction to qualitative data analysis which was on the basic level and today again we are introducing you to atlas ti it's also on the basic level i have projected the whole uh, semester schedule with different themes and and the levels as well as the registration links which we will share with you after this session. So I must emphasize that these are just working sessions to keep you engaged in our qualitative analysis. And uh, from June, we will have full workshops over above this working sessions on Atlas TI. So now the objectives of this session, today's session is to ensure that you understand the basics of Atlas TI and the applications within it and we will assist you with setting with setting up a project and importing data it can be a project or your documents and we'll explore a bit the main features and functions of atlas ti so this is what we will do um today now just reflecting a bit on the previous session as a qualitative researcher, you will collect data, which might be in a form of interviews, and you have to transcribe. You have to prepare your data by analyzing it and also ensure that uh, there is some visualization. And I must say that with Atlas, it can assist you to sort out this data, to arrange it and to present it visually so that when you are presenting your findings, you are able to tell a story. And this can also assist you when you are developing either a model or a framework. So this is how Atlas is going to assist you. Now, first thing first, what is Atlas TI? So it is a computer assisted qualitative data analysis software which facilitate the analysis of unstructured and non-numerical data. So that is qualitative data. And I must say there are few or several softwares in the market. And the most popular ones, it's, it's in Vivo and Atlas. But at UNISA, we have the license with Atlas TI. And I will explain why we we chose Atlas TI over some uh, softwares. And another question that you may be asking yourself is why use this computer assisted qualitative data analysis software, where else you can analyze manually. And here is an idea for those maybe who haven't started analyzing qualitatively. So if you are doing manually, which you can for, for small project, but then this is how um, you will go about coding and arranging your data because we talk about uh, sorting data and arranging data. So this is the manual process that you will be taking and also making that you write some notes um, on the side. There's nothing wrong with it, and um, but we are saying there are better and more efficient way of coding um, rather than, than manual. And the process is, is, is the same, but then uh, the software, you will see how it will assist you. So the benefits of, of coding manually versus using the software. And some of the things relate to time saving because with, with Atlas, it will be easy for you to organize, sort, and even search uh, within your, your, your transcript, your documents. And this can assist you a lot in reducing the time that you spend on manual uh, analysis. We know that as 
postgraduate student as researchers, you don't have much of time and um, every minute count, every second counts. So uh, one of the benefits is that it will save you a lot of time so that you can go about with other aspects of, of your research and like stacking on the analysis part. And another thing is it, it promotes consistency. So it makes sure that uh, there is this consist consistent approach to coding and analysis and reducing the risk of human error. Because whatever that you will be doing, you, you will do everything inside uh, this project. Where else, if you are doing it manually, you will need a lot of spaces to arrange and sort your data. So with Atlas, everything will be on your project. And it's highly likely that um, um, there will be high risk of human error. Now, data management. So it also allows you to manage large volumes of data. And like I was saying, when you are analyzing like few transcripts, you can do it manually, but then with a lot of or rather big volumes of data, it now start to get complicated, uh, especially those who might be using different sample frames. You, you might have people um, from, uh, yeah, yeah, you will have different sample frames. Uh, what do I mean by that? Meaning that the, the characteristics of, of your sample may differ. You may have managers, you may have admin, you may have focus groups, you may have documents. So. Um, audio and so on. And um, analyzing through Atlas, it will be easy for you to manage um, this data. So you can imagine analyzing this kind of volume um, manually. It will take you a lot of time and it might be difficult to, to manage all of those data. And another thing is it, it helps you to enhance um, visualization. So with Atlas TI, just like any other softwares, for those who um, want some quantitative aspect um, to be presented, you can generate weight clouds, weight frequency tables, and uh, there are some special functions on core occurrence matrices and, and so on, and we will touch on them. So um, you can generate drawings, visuals within Atlas TI to make sure that your data is easily uh, presented and increase transparency. So Atlas provides you with an audit trail of the analysis process, which is very important in, in qualitative research because this responds to the trustworthiness of data. And, and I will highlight um, that briefly. Integration with quantitative data, some packages allow researchers to integrate like those who are doing mixed method, but then with Atlas is um, more on qualitative, but then we can generate some, some frequencies, um, especially for those who are doing content analysis and, 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 and so on. So it's a matter of how you will present um, those numbers, but then there are some functions that we, we can use to generate some, some frequencies for you. Now the disadvantages, because there's always advantages and disadvantages. And I am saying to, to you as a UNISA student, there are no disadvantages. Why am I saying it? I'm going to project most of the disadvantages um, from the, um, the users worldwide. So cost, the first thing is cost. So these softwares are very expensive. And including Atlas, we know that it's a commercial software and you need to pay for it. But then at UNISA, we have paid the license. Um, and as a registered student, as a staff member, you will have a full package. So we are eliminating this thing, of course, because with UNISA students, with UNISA staff members, um, you get it for free, free of charge. Now, technical requirements is, is another issue. Uh, because the software has the specific hardware and software requirements. And um, for this one, I must say, as MND students, there are several bursaries, so we will encourage you to 
to apply for those bursaries so that you can get a good laptop that can match um, this technical requirement. But then for those who might not, um, who might apply for these bursaries and are unsuccessful or have some other challenges, we do have computer labs at UNISA. So those who are staying or residing near the regional service centers, we do have a lot of computer labs. So uh, you might consider going to one of the labs so that you can use and access um, the, this software. Now the learning curve. So most of the users complain that you will take a lot of time learning how to use the software and so and so on and so on. But then at UNISA, like I indicated earlier, we have these working sessions. 40, 30, 45 minutes at last year, working sessions. And we, we over above this, we have full training workshops. And as like I indicated that from June, we will have full workshops. And uh, my colleague in the College of Education will be running um, this, this workshop. But then you also have uh, that luxury of consulting us and um, because we are at different stages of um, our analysis. So we are there for you to make sure that you learn on how to use uh, this software so that you can analyze uh, appropriately. Internet connectivity, especially for us in the global south, in, in South Africa, we know that we always have some challenges with ESCOM. But I must say that with Atlas, and I will demonstrate that, um, you can use it offline, especially with this app on the on the desktop. You can use it um, offline. There is another um, option where you can use it online, but then in cases where there are some internet connectivities and so on, uh, rather use the desktop app and it will be uh, effectively also. The language barriers, yes, for now, I think English uh, is the primary language. I know that Atlas, they have gone out of their way to accommodate some of, some of the languages. I know Spanish is one of them, but then with us in South Africa, in Africa, I think we are on English. So it is better to, to use um, only English when you are analyzing in, in Atlas. And we do understand that not all of us are English uh, first language speakers. And that is why we have a lot of training again on academic writing and academic literacy. So in the regions, we have academic literacy projects. You can contact your regions on that. I know there are facilitators, there are programs that are running. But with us, College of Graduate Studies, we do a lot of workshops on academic writing skills and uh, I will give you a link where you can access our workshop links, dates, and, and, and scopes. So yeah, I think we need to stick to English um, for now for those who are in Africa, in South Africa. Now, other users are complaining about the software on limited local support. And it depends on, on the country, but then in the UNISA context, we, we have a lot of localized support. And I will also give you the, the mailboxes. So we have our own ICT, institutional ICT, who are there to support you with anything related to, to Atlas TI. Secondly, us as the College of Graduate Studies, we are supporting you on this Atlas TI. And thirdly, your colleges, your departments will also follow and assist you with um, Atlas TI. So this one doesn't apply to, to you. Hence, when I started, I said with UNISA students, there are no disadvantages. So the last one on cultural and contextual relevance, yes, Atlas TI, just like many other softwares and tools, it is developed in the Western. So there are some features, terminologies, and workflows that may not be easy for you to comprehend. Like, for example, we are using the term themes, and in Atlas, they are using memos. But then this one, through our training, I think we will address it. So it won't be really a disadvantage for you. 
Now let's go to, to the advantages. Obviously, the first one, free license, full package for UNISA registered students and staff. Um, the issue of time management that I talked about. Um, collaboration. So yes, Atlas TI allows you to, to collaborate either with your supervisor or your co-coder. So I know some of you, um, you might not be confident to, to analyze data for yourself and you will hire a co-coder. But then what we are saying is that uh, even though you are hiring someone to analyze data for you, because you might have various and valid reasons, but you need to know how the system works. And Atlas TI, especially the online one, um, it allows you to collaborate. So you will be in the project, your co-coder will be in the project. So whatever thing that they are doing, you will follow. Whatever codes that they are generating, you, you will follow. So for those who are not doing it by themselves, we really encourage you to also get involved and uh, learn how to code and work with your co-coder. That is in case you are outsourcing um, these services, especially for, for, for PhD. Now that we have oral exams as part of your examination, you will need to know each and every step of, of your study so that you can defend it um, accordingly. So it also allow you to edit transcript. You might have made some mistakes while you are transcribing. So in Atlas TI, you can edit um, um, those transcripts um, and make sure that the spelling is, is, is okay. So here I'm, I am saying it is possible when you are coding to form relation with the code uh to the participants so what am I, what am i seeing and especially for those who are doing literature review and and content analysis so it, it allows you to relate the code with um the articles or your participant if you were doing the interviews or the document so and this is critical when you are reviewing or you are providing discussion and analysis, um, indicating how many codes or which codes are running across which participants, which documents, and, and, and so on. And you are also able to make notes on um, the documents or the codes, which is very important um, and will help you when you are discussing. Let me just go back a bit. Um, so when you are doing manual, you will have your many journals trying to make notes and so forth. So this function, it is there in Atlas and um, it is connected to uh, the code or the document. So when you are in the project, everything that you do, you can do in the project without going out. Another advantage for those who are visual, it can generate network diagrams for you. You can generate um, these pictures, uh, which will show how these codes and themes are linking to the particular participants, documents, or articles. And I am, stre I am stressing again that uh, the advantage of support. So different entities, again, localized support uh, in UNISA, but over and above that, you can direct your inquiries to, to Atlas directly to them and they will help you. And I have tested it with a lot of students where they might have a problem and I say, okay, I write directly to, to Atlas with your UNISA email address. And within 24 hours, they will receive some, some assistance from Atlas TI. So there is a lot of support. UNISA has invested a lot. So make sure that um, you make use of um, the services and whenever you are reaching out to Atlas, make sure that you use your UNISA email uh, because they know that we are subscribed with them and um, you will receive assistance. So these are the, the mailbox, uh, the ICT email address and um, this one MND research training workshops. If you want to know about the programs that we are doing on Atlas, you can use the second one. We also have the stat support uh, mailbox that you can do. And for, for Atlas Academy, you can write to them directly. This is the email address. And I, I, will, I will share the slides with you as well as, as the, the, the recording. 
And also on the Atlas TI website, there is this AI assistant. So if you feel that you need something like in real time right now, feel free to chat to the AI assistant and um, they will assist you accordingly. I, I have played around and um, yeah, it is a useful tool. So in terms of, of support, you can see how there is a lot of support. And this is um, some of the things that led us as UNISA to end up using Atlas TI because of um, this support. Taking note that we have students from all over the world, different time zones and, and, and so on. So yeah, this is why we, we, we went and decided to use Atlas. Another important that I want to emphasize is that um, data analysis is very important and using Atlas, it can help you to create that golden thread between your research methodology chapter and your presentation of finding chapter and as well as uh, the concluding chapter in relation to um, analysis and the presentation of, of results. So this is a very important part. And another part is we know that in quantitative, there is issues around validity and reliability. But in, in quantitative, um, we are talking more about trustworthiness of data. And many people, uh, they tend to, to ignore this, but it is one of the most important aspects. And um, I am saying that with Atlas, because you will have this audit trail, it will help you to enhance and respond to the trustworthiness of data. So in your methodology chapter, um, and the data analysis, you might consider beefing it up uh, in terms of audit, tra audit trail and um, convince the reader or rather show the reader on how um, Atlas TI has helped you to enhance this uh, dependability, which is one of the four pillars of trustworthiness of data, credibility, dependability, confirmability, and transferability. So you can demonstrate how uh, audit trail through dependability um, has assisted you to enhance this trustworthiness of data. Um, those are some of the notes that I've made. Again, coming to, to the audit trail. So, when you are setting setting up a project, at the end you will have this picture, and and I'll show you. You can have the title of your study, and and your name will also appear. So this is part of um, um, research quality and 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 rigor, and part of the output within the Atlas TI is the the reports that you can retrieve. So. You can have document reports, code reports, which are linked to code groups, quotation reports, and memo reports. Memos are um, themes. So memo is, is a theme, but then, like I indicated, they are using some different languages. But yeah, you can retrieve these reports, which can um, really show um, the quality in, 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 in your study. So this is what I'm talking about. So the landing page in, in Atlas, especially the desktop, desktop will be like this, uh, which you, you can use to demonstrate um, the quality um, of, of your study. So at first glance, we can see the title of your study and any other information. And here you can see that this is created by you. If you are collaborating with someone, there will be another line where it says um, you are collaborating with someone. So yeah, um, even the examiners, the readers, they can see that you were really involved in um, the analysis process. Uh, we will go live into the Atlas and so that we talk about this, um, the main features which you will uh, use. But then for today, because it is an introduction, I'll talk more about um, the document uh, manager, but you can see there's a lot of functions where you can search your documents, your code, you can analyze, uh, import, and, and, and so on. So another more advantages is that uh, with Atlas 24, because now we are on version 24, which UNISA is providing to you for free. So there are this 
are artificial intelligence features. The AI summaries, which can summarize the document for you. And uh, the intentional coding. So in case where uh, an AI summary, yes, there, there are a lot of debate around AI and how to use it, but then I believe um, as researchers, you are responsible and you can use it um, responsibly and not over depend on it. And that is why we are doing this uh, research training intervention so that you, you know the theory behind um, what these functions are doing. So intentional coding, uh, for those who will have a lot of um, the documents or participants, um, I am saying this because I know this year I saw one of the students who had um, 87 documents. So you can see they had a lot of, of, of documents. So they can also use intentional coding. So you, how does it work? You provide um, the system with your research questions and everything that you want. And I must say this is also good for when you are coding deductively. So when you are coding deductively, you already have those uh, preconceived concepts that you can use. But then for those who are coding inductively, everything will have to come out of these codes and themes. So it might be a challenge. But then for those who are doing it deductively, yes, you, there is a provision, a space where you can provide research questions and um, it will try, it will attempt to code. It's not 100%, but it does try and attempt to code in responding to your research questions that you have uh, punched in on, on the system. And it, it looks something like this. So you will have your research questions and um, you just instruct it to, to code and respond to, to your questions uh, or aim. And again, I am emphasizing that this is useful one for those who have large, large, large data and two, those who are coding deductively. So yes, I've talked about uh, the AI summaries, intentional coding, the AI coding, yes. So even with your, your transcript, you can load your transcript and Atlas TI will code it for you. But like I said, they are developing these tools and I think it's important for you to know the process behind coding um, because it, it is going to code everything. So where with your human intelligence, you can code on one, one standard transcript, you can code maybe 60 codes. So Atlas AI coding may go up to 200. Um, sometimes it will, not sometimes, always, it will code even, you know, in a transcript, you will have a researcher saying this, a participant saying this. So even what the researcher is saying, it will code. So you will have a lot of codes. And um, it, it is useful in a sense that you might see some of the things that you didn't think about and try to adopt those coding. Um, so if you are using this function, what you can do then is you can allow it to code, go back to the code, see how those codes are and adopt those codes that you feel that um, are relevant and uh, remove uh, those that are not. So even though it's coding for you, which is fast because um, while you are coding a transcript, you might take um, maybe two or more hours, but then with Atlas, even in less than two minutes, it can do that for you. But then you still have to go back and work and clean those coding. So there's no shortcut in, in coding, even when you are using AI, you still have to do a lot of work. Imagine if you are seeing 200 codes on a transcript, um, so yeah, you, you have to really work and, and, and work. Um, so you can avoid working, but then at least it can assist you in uh, seeing other things that you were not aware of here. Yeah. The concept, yes, you, you can have uh, weight clouds, the list and trees and, 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 and so forth. 
And I am talking about, um, yes, uh, the concepts, uh, the weight loss, and, and so forth. So you can play around with uh, this function and see what is appearing more in your transcripts or your document. And another AI features um, the opinion mining. So if you see a concept like a world, it will also see uh, tell you how this concept has been uh, used or how are they talking about. And this can really assist you a lot, especially in your um, discussion phase. So a lot of features, AI features coming in, but then you need to understand them. We are here to help you and most um, importantly, use them responsibly. Now, for those who are uh, interested in, in sentiment, uh, yes, it can also pick it up, you know, whether the statement is positive, negative, or neutral. And you can also work on them, accept, or amend. Um, so those are a lot of um, um, the, the advantages of, of AI. So this is just weight frequencies. Sometimes you hear people who are analyzing the president's speech during the opening of parliament, they will say uh, the president used um, this weight only three times. Yeah, so they just run it into um, this software like Atlas and then it will, it will, it will just generate this uh, weight frequencies. This, um, there's also this thing in Atlas, the density and groundedness. So after you have coded, you will have a list of codes here on your left. And what does this mean? It, it shows you um, the number of this code, how they are appearing. And I think this is very important because it might help you to choose the codes that you want to choose. Imagine if you are having 500 codes, obviously you won't use all of them, but then those who that those those that are appearing in high numbers, I believe there's no way that you might um, decide not to use them because they are significant. And I'm not saying those that are appearing less, the outliers, um you must not use them they also have a place and the next thing now is that atlas goes further and show you the density so this codes they are sometimes connected with other codes and this is how you can see the density when you are linking um this this uh codes so you can see while you have a big number uh, telling you how many times this code is appearing, but you can also see how it is linked to other codes. So this is a um, very important one and that you cannot afford not to present in your study. I talk about the quantitative capabilities. So you can see the code document analysis. So after you have coded, you can also generate a table and see how these codes are appearing in your documents, in your participants. And this will also help you to um, know how to link and discuss um, this data. Uh, what am I saying? So you can present your data, but then when you are discussing and analysis, analyzing, sometimes you, you need to show the similarities between your participants, so what is similar between uh, these participants, you know? And I think this course can, can show you uh, and help you to write more and discuss and analyze these um, uh, similarities, the differences, the, the contradictions, and, and so forth. So it is an important um, analysis tool and uh, capability in, in Atlas TI. And the same applies to code core occurrence. You have code that are occurring in um, the same quotation. So yeah, it, it is uh, important for you to talk about those, discuss those and analyze, uh, provide, I mean, an analysis. Now for those who are visual people, so after you have coded, 
and you are about to start with your writing, your write up, you can generate um you can generate the images. So which and each and every code you can see where is it coming from. And I think this can uh, help you where you have a theme, a sub code and, and I mean sub theme in a code and the links um, and where these uh, codes are, are coming from. Now getting started, um, because this is just a small session and I see I have uh, about um, 10 minutes or less so that I can allow those who have a few questions to, to post them and be addressed. So with the license, how do you get a license and access? Um, there is a form that you can fill and um, try to respond as honestly as you can. And yeah, more information and communication will follow. We will assist you in, in installing um, this software on behalf of, of ICT. For staff members, this form won't work much for you because UNISA laptops, somehow they are restricted when coming to downloads. So for staff members, um, please make sure that you go directly to ICT and they will help you uh, immediately. So I don't think there's a need to, to log a call. You can just visit their office and uh, they will help you because if you get an installation link, there will be a stage where it say it need your administrator password and, and so on, so on. So we always encourage staff members who are using UNISA laptops to to go to ICT. But if you are using your personal one, um, yeah, you can let us know. We will talk. So this is the current version, um, version 24. Uh, it also comes with the web one. So whether you are using Windows or Mac, um, yeah, we can assist you with, with, with those links. So after you have downloaded, you will see um, there will be UNISA invitation. So they, there will be a Windows one, the Mac one, and um, the web one. So those who are using Windows, just download Windows. Uh, ignore the, the Mac one. Those who are using the Mac, focus on on the on the on the make but then the the open web one um it doesn't matter which um laptop or device you are using you can access it wherever you are and um, this is where collaboration it, it, it's a bit um easier now um for today, because you just have an overview, I just want to go into Atlas and show you how you can create a project. So before you can create a project, make sure that you have a folder on your desktop or under your document where you have your documents. Uh, if you have transcripts, make sure that you label them accordingly, not with the names of their participants, um, but use pseudonyms like participant one, participant two, participant three, before you can load them into Atlas make sure that you you have done that labeling and if you are doing literature review and you are using atlas some people um, label their document using uh, the title of the study but it will be long and it will be problematic when you are creating this visualization like for example you see here it's participant five so imagine if you have a long table your, your diagram won't be as nice so make sure that you might consider using um the author instead of um the the uh, the title of the study but it's just a recommendation um and judging from the experience that I've seen from those who are using long, very long um, labels. So ensure that your text at least. So for those who are transcribing, make sure that before you download, I mean, you upload to Atlas, um, your transcript at lean, uh, the spelling and other things, though the participant are saying those things verbal team, but try as much uh, to, to clean your, your transcript. And after you have done that, you will be ready to import data and uh, organize uh, your data accordingly and this is how it will appear in uh, the online one and uh, let me just open the um, let me let me just share my screen so that i can open uh, 
um, the web one. So after you have downloaded, you will see there will be an icon like this, Atlas TI24. So let's open this. Uh, these are the updates. I am saying remind me later. Right. So this is how this will be your landing page. Um, it will be your name here. If you click on it, it will say show license information. So this is uh, everything related to, to your license. You will see when it is expiring. And um, people always ask about uh, this, um, the seats and so on, reserve the seats, offline availability. So if you know that you might be in a place where you won't have network uh, for about a week or two weeks, you, you can do that. Um, but uh, this is not, um, you, you can just go ahead even if you, you don't uh, do that. Project preferences, this again are your preferences. Uh, I'm not going to dwell much um, on it. So to create a project, there is an icon, create new project. So what you can do, you can write uh, maybe title of your study or uh, the chapter that you are working on, literature review chapter two on sub, and you can make um, some comments here and you create and what will happen okay just a moment what will what will happen now uh, let me go back you will see uh, the name that you you have labeled will appear so this is how it's going to be um from from the first glance you can see how many documents are there the codes and everything so everything is still zero 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 but you can see that it's created by you and uh the version so how do you add the documents so um you can go to documents on the top left and add files or add folder so if you have everything in one folder, you can add a folder. If you are adding them individually after, maybe say you are interviewing, you are transcribing and cleaning them, then you are uploading them as and when. You can go to um, add file, uh, go where you have saved um, your transcripts and add them. Then immediately you will see there will be one document here. Um, if you feel like, because I also emphasize that everything that you do, you can work in Atlas. So if you, if you feel that you want to make some notes, you can also add a new uh, document and uh, that you can work on and uh, make some notes. Um, so yeah, you can see two documents here and uh, nothing. Um, let me show you something again. So it, it may happen. It may happen that you let me show you something for those who are OK on the, on the types of documents that you can um, upload. So the weight you can upload the weight, the PDF, it can read the PDF, but then the PDF, um, sometimes students, the mistake that they made um, they upload the scan PDF. So make sure that you don't upload those scan ones, but then the readable PDFs. Because Atlas won't be able to read the scan um, uh, files. So yeah, I wanted to emphasize that. But then uh, for those who are analyzing videos or songs, audios, yes, you, you can import them into, into Atlas and uh, you will be able to, to analyze. For those who are analyzing um, the drawings, the pictures and so forth, it, it can be uploaded. Uh, those who are in geography and um, uh, somehow are using maps and other things, you can also add and, and analyze accordingly. So after you have added your documents, you will see it's three documents. In our case, it might be 10, it might be 15. You might feel like, okay, 
I have different characteristics, so different uh, sample frames. So what you can do, you can um, group them accordingly and say, okay, I was interviewing uh, the managers. I was interviewing the managers. Uh, managers, I was interviewing um, another group, the professors. So you just um, go to documents and open this uh, document manager and you will see there will be another file. So that's where you can uh, form um, these groups, uh, administrators and so on and so on. Then if you feel like this one, uh, okay, if this one was a professor, you can just drag uh, it into there. If this is a manager, you can, yeah. So you first step is to create a project load the documents, then group them. So this is how you are organizing um, the data. In the cases where you were working with someone and they gave you a project, you are able to, to load and import the project. So you will uh, click on import project and go where you have saved um, your project um then import and it will um just upload everything uh, for you so you will see this is a project where you were working maybe with your co-coder or your supervisor then we have all these documents in here you see so make sure that you you have organized your documents in, in your folder, clean them, uh, open a project, and um, after you've opened a project, uh, make sure that you, you group your documents accordingly. So you can see this one, we have grouped them, it's interview transcripts, the experts, the lay people, literature review, and the YouTube videos. So this is how you can organize um, your, your data. And I think for today, um, we will end here. So uh, we have talked about this, this uh, function, the document manager. There are other ones, uh, the quotations manager, the, the codes manager, the memo, which are the themes and, and so forth. And when you are inside um, this code manager, you, you can analyze, use those uh, AI summaries, opinion mining, when frequencies, and, and so on. But then for today, I think you have a gist of what Atlas is and how you can use it. And um, we will have another session uh, going deeper into these functions, um, the coding, as well as coding, uh, using AI tools, generating the themes and, and, and so on. But then for today, I think we will stop here.